Good morning. As we prepare for worship, let me exhort you with Romans 12, verse 1. It says here, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Lord, we thank you that we get to worship you wherever we are right now, whatever season we are in right now, whatever age or whatever work we may have. Lord, we thank you that we get to worship you. Lord, we worship you for who you are and what you have done and is doing and will do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's worship God.
continuing our study of Hebrews and today we'll be reading a very very packed Hebrews chapter 9 verses 1 to 14. It says here, Now even the first covenant had regulations for worship and an earthly place of holiness. For a tent was prepared, the first section in which were the lampstand and the table and the bread of the presence. It is called the holy place. Behind the second curtain was a second section called the most holy place having the golden altar of incense and the Ark of the Covenant covered on all sides with gold, in which was a golden urn holding the manna and Aaron's staff that budded and the tablets of the covenant. Above it were the cherubim of glory, overshadowing the mercy seat. Of these things, we cannot speak in detail. These preparations having thus been made, the priests go regularly into the first section, performing their ritual duties, but into the second only the high priest goes. And he bought once a year, not without taking blood, which he offers for himself and for the unintentional sins of the people. By this, the Holy Spirit indicates that the way into the holy places is not yet open as long as the first section is still standing, which is, the symb which is symbolic for the present age. According to this arrangement, gifts and sacrifices are offered that cannot perfect the conscience of the worshiper but deal only with food and drink and various washings, regulations for the body imposed until the time of reformation. But when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with the hands, not made with hands that is not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy places, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of defiled persons with the ashes of a heifer sanctify for the purification of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? You know, as I started reading and meditating on this, one of the first things I see is that the temple and the priesthood are a reminder for them and for us that God is holy and worthy to be worshipped. No, yun yun nasa verse 1 pa lang, no? kitang kita na natin doon. May regulations for worship and an earthly tent, or earthly place rather, of holiness. You know, God is holy. That's why that this tent and there's this uh, holy place, most holy place, and we need, or uh, there's these regulations of worship. We get to worship God because He's holy. Now, I just want to quickly share some observations, five specifically, of what we see here. You know, the first one is the audience. No, the audience seems to be very familiar with the Old Testament way of worship. No, okay, you my first uh, five verses. The author went on to do a recap of some of the things done and seen in the way Jews worship God. Now, the next thing that we can see are the symbols. No, and dami dyan, the tent, the materials found in the most holy place. All of them were created by men, and all of them have a rich story behind it. Ang dami. The tent reminds us of God's dwelling pre presence here on earth, the intersection ng earth and heaven. The urn, okay, that holds the manna, shows how, how God has provided for His people for 40 years. 
man does not live on bread alone, but, for, but by every word. The tablets of the covenant that shows that God has entered a covenant with His people. Yung staff ni Aaron that shows that God has indeed chosen the Levites and Aaron to be His priest. At ang dami pa. <laughs> Kaya pala sabi niya doon, no? of these things we cannot now speak in detail. Maubos yung oras natin kung titignan natin to bawat isa. Now, another thing that we can see, no, the first is the audience, and then the symbols, okay? The other thing that we saw here are the priests, the priesthood, no, the priest ministers before God. And yet, here's an interesting observation. Even the priests, even those tasked by God to serve Him in a full-time basis, even they themselves need to be cleansed. The priests need the sacrifices as well. Hindi lang pang sa ibang tao, pero pati sa kanila rin. The fourth thing that we see are the sacrifices. These are sacrifices you know, from goats and calves and lambs. They're constantly or continuous ang pag-sacrifice because they are limited. Ibig sabihin, hindi sapat yung offerings, yung sacrifices na to. And not only that, they are also imperfect. And what's the effect? No, the, the audience, the symbols, the priest, the sacrifice. What's the effect? The fifth one. The effect of this is that the priest needs to constantly bring sacrifices for themselves and for the people. Paulit-ulit. Holy si God. Worthy to be worshipped. Kaya lang hindi mawala, wala yung sin. That's how we summarize it all. God's priests were given the responsibility to minister before God, and yet even they themselves are flawed. The priests themselves need sacrifice to clean them from their sins. But in verse 11, bungad na bungad pa lang ng verse 11, but, pero, ito lahat ng mga yan, ito yung mga nakita natin, ito yung uh, all of these things and how limited all of these things are as much as these things are beautiful because it came from God's law, but it's limited. But there's a contrast. These are all the priests and the sacrifices offered. But, sabi dito, when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come. Wow. These are all the way people used to worship. But then he goes on to share how Jesus is superior to the high priest before. No, the first way is in the audience. Kung yung una, yung audience, familiar na sa all, all the Jewish regulations and ways of worship, now the author is reminding them, yes, you have that rich history, but now there is a vastness of Freedom because of what Jesus has done. You're not letting go of this in the sense na, ay, walang kwenta to mga to. No, there's so much rich history here. But all of this as, are a setup to what Jesus has done. Which leads us to the symbols. Now, before the tent were made by men, pero sabi dito, no, sa verse na binasa natin, yung tent, not made with hands, that is not of this creation, it's greater and more perfect. It's God's work. This new way of doing things, it's God's work too. All of the things that they had, all of those symbols are all pointing to this. It's all God's work. It's all God's, God's plan. And not only that, kung dati, may mga priests with an S. Now, there's only a priest with a single, walang S. The priests in the Old Testament were all flawed. But Christ is without blemish. He is perfect. He is the perfect high priest. And He offered Himself. Kung dati yung sacrifice, the fourth one, the sacrifice are that of animals, goats, cows, sheep, lamb. The, the sacrifice now is the very blood of Christ. Yun yung sabi dito, He entered once for all into the holy places, not by means of the blood of goats and cows, but by means of His own blood. What could be more valuable than the blood of the Son of God? 
that He gave for you and me. What is the effect? Diba, the effect to the Old Testament priests of the sacrifices they did are limited. They need to do it continuously kasi limited lang, nagkakasala sila, hindi matanggal yung kasalanan. The sacrifice of what Christ has done not only cleansed the priests, but every one of us who believes. And particularly, it shows two things. Eternal redemption and purified conscience from dead works. That's what we see here. Sabi dito, verse 12, But by means of His own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. Our future is secured by Christ's blood. May iba sa atin dito, no? we're thinking, Ano bang mangyayari sa future? Now, I know in this life, there's so much uncertainty, but doesn't it give us so much peace and security that at least in the afterlife, <laughs> pag, uh, when we do finally meet Jesus, there is eternal redemption. Hindi siya mahawala. And not only that, purified conscience from dead works. How we used to do things and what we think of as right and wrong, kasi conscience, no? Uh, the intersection of morality and spirituality and our soul, all of those things. How we used to do things, how we used to think about things. What's right and wrong, all of that changed. And notice, the change or the uh, being cleansed are not just outwardly, but inwardly by what Christ has done. Previously, the sacrifices that were done and those ceremonial laws na sinasabi sa Old Testament are all outward reminders of how we need to approach God okay, in a holy way. Now Christ, because of what He has done, has cleansed us inwardly. You know, I just suddenly remind, re- remembered you know, while sharing this story. You know, I, for one, you know, grew up doing and so active with dead religion. You know, all movements, all to-dos, all assignments, at walang heart. And I think I'm okay. I'm okay because, you know, I'm not as bad as other people. Nagawa ko na to para kay God. Nakabawi na ako kay God. Okay, ito yung kasalanan ko. Yan, nabayaran ko yan. Yung sacrifice ko kay God. But even from this one, those are all dead works. And it says here from this verse, it has purified the blood of Christ, purified my conscience from dead works. Maybe for some of us here, may ganun tayong thinking. Ginagawa ko to para kay God. Or maybe, for some of us here, your old life, okay? Um, you used to live in sin. Dead to sin talaga. Even our good works are dead works because we are dead to sin. We are not saved. We don't have Jesus in our lives. You know, the blood of Christ. When we came to Christ, He has saved us from that. He has cleansed us. Or, or, Maybe for some of us, currently, now, you are serving God. No? And you're wondering, before, you were so passionate for God. Sobrang on fire ka para kay Lord. But because of current circumstances, whether it's the pandemic, or mental health, or challenges, or talagang nanlamig ka lang, or maybe you may have done sin in the past months or the past years, and you felt that you are a damaged good, you feel cold, you feel distant from Him, and you try to make it up to Him, but you can't, or you don't feel like it's enough. Yung parang feeling mo hindi ka maka-all out para kay God. I have good news for you. Whether you're that person, like me, who's into religious things, or maybe you're someone, or you know someone, who is dead to sin, or maybe you're someone who is bogged down by the sins, the mistakes, the limitations, the circumstances, where wherever we are right now, di, di maka move forward. I have good news for all of us here. The blood of Christ has cleansed us to worship and serve God. Wow. I want to read that verse. No? Sabi dito, How much more will the blood of Christ who through the eternal Spirit offered Himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. You know, the word serve 
can also be translated to worship. Praise be to God that the reason for our worship or for our service is not because of our own standing, our own doing, but because of Christ's doing, of what Christ has done. Eh, kung tayo lang, <laughs> aminin na natin, hindi tayo consistent. <laughs> At actually, hindi natin kaya. Hindi natin matimbang na maayos. We either overestimate, underestimate ourselves, our sins, our accomplishments, our identity, our value. But, pero ang sarap. Ang sarap isipin that our past has been dealt with. <laughs> when He purified us from our sins. At the same time, our future secured, our eternal redemption. Because of all those things, the past and the future, what should we do now? We should continue to worship and serve God. The blood of Christ has cleansed us to worship and serve God. I want to encourage all of us here. Instead of thinking how we can make it up to God, minsan ba may ganun tayong thinking, paano ako makakabawi kay God? Pag ganun kasi yung thinking natin, uh, para siyang ano eh, yung negative, negative, tiba zero, negative, parang hinahabol natin, kailangan makapunta tayong positive. Instead of thinking that way, I want to encourage you, the question we should be thinking is, how can we worship and serve God because of what He has done? Because ang starting point nun, nasa positive ka na. We're not trying to put ourselves to be accepted by God. We are already accepted. And because we are accepted, we want to worship. We want to serve God. Hindi negative to positive. We are on this side. We are positive. Christ has done that for us. Now, I want to end by declaring that verse that I mentioned earlier from Romans 12.1. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, or sa isang, tra- sa isang translation, in view of God's mercy, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Remember, the blood of Christ has cleansed us. Now we are free to worship and serve Him. Two questions that I want to leave, leave before I pray for all of us here. What are some things that are hindering you to worship God? Is it your past? Is it your accomplishments? Is it those things na ambag mo kay Lord? Is it the good old days? Now you're having a hard time. Why aren't you like that? What are some of the things that are hindering you to worship Him? When Christ has cleansed us so that we can worship Him and serve Him freely, what are some of those things that's stopping us? Second question is that, what are some ways that we can serve Him right now? in view of God's mercy, with our bodies, with whatever we have, how can we serve Him? I want to take this time to pray for all of us here. Lord, thank You for reminding us that we have been cleansed by what You have done on the cross. Thank You, Jesus, for what You have done. Thank You for freeing us to worship someone who is worthy to be praised, worthy to be worshipped, Thank you that we get to serve you. Thank you that we get to value you, the one who valued us the most. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You are good, you are good. You are faithful and true. You are good, you are good. You are true to your word. You are good, you are good.
Before we go, let me just pray for all of us here. Lord, I bless everyone who's watching right now. Lord, may we use this day and this coming months to worship you, to serve you in new ways, in ways that we never thought we could. And I pray, God, that you would also use us, Lord, to serve other people, to help them, to be an extension of your hands and feet. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.